there's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Burn patterns have been working really well. This week's fuzz bite report just keeps snapping it off the body. This is just a remarkable concentration of fish. Real good fish. Oh, she looks so nice. Wow. Unreal. Look at that. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking about primetime panfish. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Joel Nelson. You know, it's the beginning of July. Things are really heating up across the upper Midwest. This time of year, you might be uh, thinking about bass fishing, but with the uh, recent weed growth, this is an excellent time for panfish. Absolutely, you know, I grew up pan fishing really with my grandfather, summer vacations. It was just a wonderful time to get out. Fourth of July, anything past, we've got some great weed growth. You know, it's not that hard of a recipe to follow. A lot of your good lake mapping is gonna help you find those big main lake points associated flats, good coontail or cabbage beds. And from there, you simply work your way out. You use your electronics because these fish can suspend and really suspended panfish in the summer, that's what it's all about. You gotta find them. And then once you find them, the catching can be really good. <laughs> yes, it can. So right now, let's take a close look at primetime panfish. When is primetime panfishing? Some may say when the spawn is on, for others, it's right now when the fish are around the weeds. And for others, it might be winter through a hole in the ice. But wow. everyone agrees, panfish are awesome. Wow. They're fun to catch, abundant, delicious, and you can fish them 12 months out of the year. For panfish in the north, the spotlight shines in spring and winter. In many bodies of water, panfish in the summer are all but forgotten. However, this can be one of the best bites of the year. Find a good weed edge and you'll likely find big schools of sunnies and crappies willing to bite. And now, it's not about finesse. Just get it's something hard. close to them it's and hard. you'll find some cooperating customers. As common as panfish are, they do face some serious challenges. A hot bite one year may leave a lake with few to offer the next. Today's technology, social media, and the rapid spread of information can turn a booming fishery into a busted one in short order. Management and regulation struggle to keep pace with advancements in angling and harvest pressure. That means we need to sharpen up on our science and use best practices to ensure quality fisheries for the future. This time of year, panfish can really move around a lot, especially with the weed growth that's happening across the upper Midwest in our lakes. What are one or two things that you're doing to not only find the fish, but catch them? You know, one of the biggest things on the front end in finding them is using your electronics because like we were talking about, these fish sometimes within minutes or hours can move up and down in the water column. So both your down sonar as well as your side imaging can really help you find these fish. Now to catch them, it's really a big function of both depth and then speed because speed is gonna help us determine how we're gonna get bit. And I can tell you right now, crappies especially, don't like chasing down fast moving baits unless they're, they're, they're really motivated to eat. And that's not all the time. So what we need to do is we need to look at whether we're float fishing, crankbait fishing, jig trolling, covering the depth, right? But also a speed that's appropriate that's gonna make them wanna eat. And I'll give you one tip too. I know a lot of Southern pros, crappie pros down spider rigging, they'll put weight on the front of their boat because they don't like those jigs moving up and down too erratically. So keep that in mind, steady, constant retrieves or slow movement over time, that's gonna get you bit more often than not. Yes, it will for sure. After this short break, we're gonna talk more panfish as well. The first of our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog. For the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks 
It's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance. New advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance. The mono that thinks it's a braid. According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Today we're talking about panfish. You know, many people, myself included, were introduced to fishing through panfish, but they're a delicate resource, selective harvest is key, and there are many regulations in place state by state to ensure quality fish for many years to come. Yeah, absolutely, Troy. And one of those regulations, and some of those regulations nationwide, have to do with the size of panfish in terms of length. And I tell you, measuring your fish can really help you understand truly what a 10 inch bluegill takes to attain that level or a 14 inch crappie per se. So go ahead and try not to think of pan fish necessarily as just for the pan. Mind you, they're great table fare, but there's so much more if you give them a chance. And now in our Timely Topics feature, we're gonna look closer at why these regulations are in place. I remember the days of 100 perch. I remember the 30 sunfish and the 15 crappie. Today's world's different than it was 25 years ago. Bluegills are a fleeting resource. Our panfish are getting smaller and smaller. I think we need to do a way better job at conserving our panfish. It's easier to get on them. It's easier to catch them. We are too good, too well equipped, and too educated right now. They're gonna be gone. Unfortunately, I think every single state in the northern part of the United States has too high of of limits on panfish. Do you really need 25? Do you really need 50? 25 is like more than anybody should need. I'm all for having regulations that allow us to keep a reasonable number of fish, a meal or so of fish. When it comes to panfish regulations, it's a really hard one. There's not a one size fits all. I like individual like management. I think where we have an opportunity to grow truly trophy panfish, we should go for it there. I seek out special regulation lakes to go fish. Panfish slots need to happen sooner rather than later. For bluegills, I think it's really simple. I think the challenge is getting people to measure their fish. If you take the bigger fish out of the water, bluegills, their population stunts. Uh, the biologists, we really re need them to kind of give us some direction and some help on that. How important are the bluegills, the larger fish? They're very important. And actually, part of the, the efforts that we're trying to make with uh, using our reduced bag limit on six lakes that we did is also doing some education to anglers, understanding the difference between male and female bluegill. But the males tend to be more brightly colored. They have a more of a bull style nose or rounded style nose as opposed to pointed. Uh, they tend to have more of the orange and or more colorful belly, less likely to be like that yellow belly and vertical barring. They won't have that as prevalent. The larger males occupy some of the best habitat in the nesting colony. So their parental care is generally higher and better. And those are the ones that we really need to put back. And basically, without the larger parental males in the population, the population size at maturity declines over time. So one of the things that we were trying to educate folks on is that, you know, it's okay to take some fish home, but keep some of the moderate sized fish and return those biggest males to the population. And even to the point that you could actually keep some smaller females or those medium sized females or even larger females. And it wouldn't be a detriment to the population because the males are the ones that dictate the overall maximum size of that individual population. You know, when you think about panfish, they're a small fish, but they can live a very long time. For example, a 10-inch bluegill and a 10-pound walleye 
they can be about the same age. Yeah, absolutely. These two fish, even though very different in size and stature, uh, can be very long lived. When we're talking about 10 inch plus bluegills, we're thinking definitely 10 plus years old in northern environments, even potentially up to 20 years old. So these are fish that I'm trying to put my kids on that are much older than my kids. So to think of those future generations, keep in mind these fish are long lived old fish that deserve conservation, just like a 10 pound walleye would. Yes, they do. And right now, it's time for the first of our BuzzBite reports. For our first report, let's talk Red River catfish with Brad Durek. Right now, we are on the spawn here on the Red River. Water temperatures reached 73 about two and a half weeks ago. Now it's cooled off. Water temp is holding at about 68, but amazingly, the spawn is progressing. I uh, haven't seen a female catfish in probably about five days, but the males have been very active, looking pretty beat up. Uh, and some of them are even starting to come out and feed and actually hit the bait rather than pick it up and carry it. So a little heat's gonna really speed this up, get things going. I predict by mid to late July, it's gonna be game on. Water flows are nearly perfect. Everybody can get out. Suckers are still easy to get for the most part. And that's what the fish want. So a lot of positive things going on. The spawn is almost over. Hang on, it's gonna be a rocky ride. Big fish for everybody. It's looking like a pretty solid time to head over to the Red River right now for some catfishing. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have more buzz bite reports to come as angling buzz continues. Your marine engine runs smoother and lasts longer with Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. At Donalinger Auto, the customer comes first. That's why they've been in the automotive business for over 50 years. They pride themselves in making real connections with real people. They're auto experts and active community supporters. Buying, leasing, new or pre-owned, Donalinger's top-notch service stands above. They'll keep you on the road and on the water. Stop in for a visit to see the excellent variety or shop at home at DonalingerAuto.com. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Okay, let's do it. That's a big boy there. Unbelievable. Look at the size of that beast. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. For our next report, let's head up to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Doing a little river fishing tonight, catching these beautiful walleyes. This is throwing a Storm 360 swim bait, and they're inhaling it. Just a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. We've had stable weather now, and it's warming up. It's summertime, and uh, I think transitions out on the lake. By transitions, I mean rock the sand, sand the mud, that type of stuff. Swim baits are working, ripping wraps are working, light bait rigs are working, leeches. I like using a half a crawler on a rig, slip bobbers out on the rocks, and the reefs are working also. Muskies are in transition, they're kind of all over the place. Everything's just uh, really getting cranked up with these warmer water temperatures. Now let's get a Leech Lake walleye and muskie report from Jason Freed. It's early July right now. We are definitely in the midst of a mayfly hatch. Um, you know, the name of the game then on Leech Lake right now is to control spinners. 
be aggressive, go for reaction style bites. Those fish are actively going to be feeding here for a little bit while longer. Pulling smile blades, butterfly blades, Colorado blades, going fast. Uh, anywhere from 1 to 1.2 miles per hour, pulling on bottom bottom bouncer. Uh, crankbaits can be effective as well, or driving around until you spot schools of fish. If they're tightly uh, congregated in one area, dropping a bobber and a leech on them is also super effective. The old standby Lindy rig crawlers and leeches are going to be good. Muskies are going to start to heat up a little bit more as well as, that, as those water temps warm. They're still out suspended, many of them, so trolling and casting is definitely the name of, name of the game right now. So come on up here. There's still some really good fishing to be had in the Leech Lake area, and we'll see you soon. Now let's check in with Joe Segura in the Alexandria region of Minnesota. Well, we've had another great week in the Alexandria area, um, catching some big sunfish, big crappies, big bass, uh, and of course some walleye too. So uh, for the sunfish, uh, crappie and bass, been using the same technique, um, been doing all year. Just a 1 32nd ounce jig under a uh, slip bobber here and um, a small plastic. And you can use any color plastic you want there, but I've been using like a red and white or green and white. It's been working real good. And just kind of pop that across the top of the weeds in uh, about 12 foot of water. It's been working great for uh, those species. And then as far as for the uh, walleye, just uh, one day it seems to be a kind of a nice lindy rig bite. <coughs> Leeches crawlers pulled through real slow, about 22, 24 feet of water. And then uh, the next day they want them a little faster. So we're kind of on that threshold where the, the uh, spinners are gonna start taking off here. But uh, again, just having another storm rolling through here. So um, have a good one. Thanks, Joe. Now for our next report, we're gonna check in with Jeff Evans in Northern Wisconsin. Things are finally warming up in Northern Wisconsin. We've got a lot of great fishing action going on. One bite in particular is the St. Louis River walleyes. We're catching a lot of nice fish like this in that 15 to 20 inch class. Also shots at bigger fish every day from 25 to 28 inches. And what we're doing is we're pulling planer boards with baits like this T-bone shad along channel edges and flats and anywhere from five to eight feet of water. Water temperatures are 65 degrees um, on, on really warm days. We're even seeing some low 60s on some days as well. In the Hayward Lakes area, the water temperatures right now are around 65 degrees. The smallmouth bass spawn is wrapped up. The mayflies are hatching and we've got just an excellent uh, topwater bite going. This storm Arashi cover pop is catching a lot of fish for us. So we've got a lot of great opportunities happen right now, whether you're in the Hayward Lakes area or in Duluth and Superior or Suwamigan Bay in Ashland. For our last report, let's head over to Green Bay where Dale strohshine has been chasing walleye. Walleye fishing right now is a little bit slow out of Green Bay on the lower bay. Um, we've got mayfly hatches going on right now, which are giving us a little bit of grief. If you're gonna go out and troll to try to find some fish, which I suggest you do, you know, the flicker shads right now and flicker minnows are my go-tos. I do like running some of those Salmo Hornets, like a number five. And as far as flicker shads and minnows, I'm running fives and sevens. And typically I'm running those about 25 to maybe 30 foot back behind the boards at about 1.7 miles an hour. But if you're gonna be jigging, um, you can use lipless, you can use paddle tails, you can use hair jigs, twister tails, lipless baits. Now, as far as depths to target, you know, typically when I'm gonna be jigging, I like to work in anywhere from about four to maybe eight feet of water is kind of where I position the boat. As far as trolling, maybe seven to 10 feet of water. And if that's not working, I'll bump out to 10 to maybe 17 feet of water as far as for the deep water that I'm working. Thanks, Dale. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have cool products and the technique of the week as angling buzz continues. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Help your engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Marine Pro. Get it today at Fleet Farm. 
While you're there, enter for a chance to win this boat in the Seafoam Marine Pro sweepstakes. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. From lawn mowers to lawn games, Fleet Farm has what you need to get the best backyard on the block. Whether it's season it, smoke it, grill it season. Green Thumb is an understatement season. Or even, this is the life season. There's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're talking about panfish and we're going to start with some hard baits. When you think about panfish, you might not necessarily think about hard baits, but these lighter baits from Rappel, these smaller X wraps and some of these finesse uh, sinking ultralight lures, they're really great for casting. On light line, you can cast these very, very far. And for more like float and fly fishing up here, the Firefly jig, and then some of these uh, uh, impulse soft plastic jigs from Northland Tackle and other jigs from VMC flap tail jig, boot tail jig. These are a little bit more cast and retrieve and some of these like the love bug. You can also fish them underneath a, a float as well. And for the float, these are from Carmel Tackle. You can see they got a weight in the bottom of them. Just attach your line to the top of it, attach to the bottom. And this is really great for casting some of these lighter jigs. And a great lure for casting from Northland Tackle, the Thumper Crappie King has a little blade at the bottom for flash and vibration. And for deep water panfish, uh, the VMC Spin Shot, nice here, you got a little swivel there so you don't get any line twists. Uh, throw a little uh, you know, live bait on, the, uh, on that and it's great for vertical fishing, you know, for, for deeper panfish. Great, from VMC the Spin Shot. And there's a lot of different tackle kits available at Fleet Farm. This happens to be from Southern Pro Tackle. This is actually a 271 piece. Kit. I'm going to open this up, see a couple different jig heads here, a few different profiles, tubes, grubs, crawfish patterns. Uh, this happens to be the 271 piece from Southern Pro Tackle. And a rod and reel combination, obviously for panfish you want a light rod and a light reel. From Daiwa, this is the Revros LT, which stands for light and tough, this is the 1000 model. And you can see a smaller little spool there, this is great for lighter, lighter diameter lines and lighter diameter lines like this from Northland Tackle, the Bionic Pan Fishing line. You know, three and four pound test is perfect for about all applications of panfish. And for the rod, balancing the rod with a light reel from St. Croix, this is the Triumph series. This is a 6'6 light action, so you get the St. Croix quality at a great price with the Triumph line. Pairs really good with like something from Daiwa Rebros LT1000. And once you caught your panfish, it's time to cook them up. There's a lot of different breadings and seasonings available at your local fleet farm. Right here, we just happen to have a small little sample, a panko style, Cajun style, and then some different uh, seasonings as well. This one happens to be a cheddar ranch here. And for frying them, right here, this is from Chard, the fish and wing fryer. 50,000 BTU cast iron burner. You got a nice stable three leg stand, 10 and a half quart pot and strainer basket, perfect for a nice fish fry. All these products are available online at fleetfarm.com, also at your local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for a technique of the week, some jig strategies for panfish. Hey everyone, Joel Nelson and Isaac Nelson with Angling Buzz, and today we're talking about summertime crappies. I've been jig trolling for a long time and it's something that I always start out with and what it is is we're simply dragging jigs behind the boat. Very simple, right? Well, it gets a little more complex than that. We can start with a couple people in the boat fishing a little bit heavier jigs, maybe 16th ounce, even up to 8th ounce, depending on the depths you're seeing fish on the fish finder. 
and then all the way up to 132nd, 164th ounce. You can mix up a variety of plastics and jigs. You can do jigs and live bait, vary your spread, see what the fish are selecting for, and then focus in on what's working at the moment. It's just like a walleye crankbait trolling run, where we hone in on bait, speed, what colors are working best, what depths to target, and then eventually you crack the code and you can focus in on fishing just those parts of the presentation. You know, as part of depth control, speed control is obviously paramount as well. It's one goes hand in hand with the other and if we're going too fast, our baits are too high above the fish. So we're gonna make sure we're good and slow anywhere from 0.3 to 0.6 miles an hour, just depending on how deep we're going. We're fishing a tiny little jig that's been really important. This tough tube in about a 30 second ounce size has really been catching the fish, but to get down to where we need to be, we had to add a split shot. Now that changes my philosophy on which rods I'm gonna be using. And I wanna be able to use a rod that's actually a size up from what most people would think. This is a medium light Legend Extreme. And what that's allowing me to do, it's a typically just, it's a walleye rod. It's paired with this Daiwa Tatula. It's a medium spinning reel. I've got 10 pound braid on here and about 10 pound floral. And this combination, which you'd normally fish for walleyes, is actually holding the weight of this jig better than would an ultralight. I'd rather catch a crappie in an ultralight, but this is working better for feel and sensitivity. That's what we're looking for right there. These are high riding schools of fish. Most likely both crappies kind of filling in the whole part of the water column there. So the trick is to make sure our jigs, at least one person's is up and above that group. And then we'll have another guy running a little bit deeper and see what we can do with both, both sets of fish. I think I'm gonna just try and drop back and spot lock on these guys because it's a good looking pod. With the wind pushing us over these fish, our jigs were probably riding too high. We were marking them and not catching them. What we need to do now and what's been proving successful for the last few fish is to take some of those waypoints we've gathered up as we're jig trolling, spot lock on top of them, and when we see fish on the graph, vertically jig, drop those right in the fish's noggin, and I think that's gonna prove to probably be the, the way we get them for the rest of the way out. Oh. Oh yes, it's a very nice one. All right, all right, here I come, bud. Oh yeah, bring them up to me. It's a nice fish. Nice work. It's been a heck of a day. We've had to be really versatile to catch these fish, and this is the reward. So congrats, buddy, on a job well done. Uh, I think I owe you a Dairy Queen, don't I? Oh yeah. We want to thank Joel Nelson for joining us this week and sharing some great information. Yeah, absolutely. You know, jig trolling can be a really, really effective way to cover water when you're fishing for panfish. Now make sure to tune in for next week's show because we're going to be talking about river fishing today. And we also want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, you know it, clean, drain, dry. And don't forget to head over to your local Fleet Farm store because our friends from Seafoam are giving away a fully rigged Lund boat. And we have our own sweepstakes here at The Buzz. You can win a fabulous weekend up on Lake Vermilion, two days of guided fishing, $500 gift card for Fleet Farm, $500 worth of Rapala tackle. Hey, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder. We will see you next time.